ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another Disney Alter Confusion Thursday Night Hangout. Thursday Night! Ladies and gentlemen, of course, I am your host, Charlie, and I'm joined once again by the prolific comer himself, Zilius. It is good to see you here on this fabulous Thursday where we do the podcast stuff, where we talk about the things with the people. Yes, yes, of course. Ladies and gentlemen, this, of course, is the Thursday Night Hangout. This is a live show. We try our best to cover the topics most important to you. If you have not submitted a topic or if you want to add in on a topic that we're discussing or perhaps all of a sudden light bulb goes off and you're like, oh, my God, we need to talk about this. Just drop it in the chat. We'll add it to the show. If we do, unfortunately, run out of time, we will add it to the very next show. I have a light bulb. Light bulb. You know what we're missing? What's that? An ultra confusion fedora all to confusion fedora i will i will look into that zelius I, I don't know if that's possible but i will look into the fedora for just for zelius okay oh bad that that would be the end of my sanity um so anyways ladies and gentlemen um let's get into some of the news now i think the biggest topic that's been going around as of late is this Weird situation that's happening uh, with Bethesda, id Software, uh, Doom, and the Doom OST, which is the original soundtrack, and oh, yeah, the composer behind it. Um, man, I have never, I have not seen. I mean, these guys are going at each other. Uh, Bethesda released a statement, I believe it was yesterday, saying the recent post by Mick Gordon, uh, who is the the uh, musical artist. Uh, both mischaracterized and misrepresented the team at id Software. The development of Doom Eternal, Marty S- Straten, Stratton, and Chad Mossholder with a one-sided and unjust account of an irreparable professional relationship. We are aware of all the details and history in this matter and unequivocally support Marty, Chad, and the team at id Software. We reject the distortion of the truth and selective presentation of incomplete facts. We stand ready with full and complete documented evidence to disclose in an appropriate venue as needed. The the statements posted online have incited harassment and threats of violence against Marty, Chad, and the id Software team. Any threats or harassment directed towards members of our teams will be met with swift and appropriate action to protect their health and safety. We remain incredibly proud of Id's previous collaborations with Mick Gordon and ask that fans refrain from reaching conclusions based on his account and, more importantly, from attacking any of the individuals mentioned on either side, including Marty, Chad, or Mick. Okay. So, the what? I, I am going to give you uh, a little bit of the story. So, uh, Mick Gordon is, like I said, is the, the maestro behind the Doom... Uh, soundtrack. Um, uh, this past E3, they uh, id Software made a surprise announcement uh, that they were going to release. If you get the collector's edition, you're not only going to get the game, but you're also going to get the OST. At the time, there was no such thing as the OST. Now, um, I, I want to be very, very clear about something. I don't care how big a company you are or how small a company you are. If you are getting a third party to come in uh, and contract work with you. You make sure that that contract is ironclad and that even if, and I want I, I want to make this abundantly clear, even if you end up not using the stuff that you contracted that person for, you still have to pay them. See, here's the problem. Um Another fun fact, see, as once upon a time, I was in game development. I can I can give you a little bit more insight. Um, this composer, uh, Mick, was told to create music for levels that weren't actually made yet. I, I can honestly tell you that it is hard to make something to kind of, you know, increase or, or make the... the, the um, the experience more immersive if you don't know what the hell is supposed to be happening. It'd be like trying to get voice actors to act out a scene without the script. Well, we have a we have a deadline. We got you know we got to do this. If that's actually how Hans Zimmer kind of does his stuff, he doesn't even know like the full story of the movies. 
So, but so not not only first of all, he was under con- uh, this guy Mick was under contract to make the music for the game. He was not under contract for the OST, which is a separate piece. Yes, yep. it shared the name. However, it's a separate project. And what ended up happening was that um, uh, what was supposed to be an entire Mick Gordon uh, original soundtrack turned out to be like 11 of like the 50, I think, um, songs on there were Mick. And then there was an audio, a lead audio engineer uh, who created the rest of them. Now, it is never, ever, ever, ever appropriate to try to threaten physical violence towards another individual or try to go after a company for something that one or two individuals are guilty of. You can't, I I understand that, you know, you want to, a lot of people are lumping all of id software in this, in this thing, but it really comes down to the people, the, the, the individuals who are uh, part of creating this contract and not paying or changing shit to, uh, you know, uh, unreasonable stuff. But if you ha- if you set deadlines with with a third uh, third party vendor, and then you start pushing up those deadlines. Uh, by the way, uh, Doom Eternal had crazy ass crunch on the development side. Um, they are a con- their contract. Does not you, they are not a full time employee. You can't try to squeeze them for everything, unless it's in the contract. Isn't so, that a boss's job though? Hmm. Isn't that a boss's job to squeeze every last ounce of joy out of their life in order to get the product out just in time? Unfortunately, that that is the the bad stereotype, and really gets reinforced a lot in the video game industry. Is that yes, the boss's job is to squeeze, and, burn them, and turn them. That's really what it comes down to. Uh, but but when you're dealing with a contract worker, you can't really burn them and turn them. But anyways, so this is not going to go anyway, uh, away anytime soon. Uh, Mick has already come out, and he's put uh, a much more detailed um, account of what, what all went on. He, um, If you go to our Discord, uh, I've, I've posted a link to his entire response. Uh, I do find it interesting that it looks like Bethesda doesn't want to get involved, you know, go through the legal stuff. But at the same time, they're, they're like, you know, uh, we'll disclose it in the appropriate venue if possible. So this is going to court. Let's just be honest. This, this is going to go to court and we'll see. Okay. Nice. I, I mean, Okay. Here's, here's something that, once again, as having been a developer before, and this is something that I learned from Full Sail University, um, this was something that, that we were taught was that when you get someone outside of your group to create uh, models, uh, music, uh, level layouts, um, you know, the, the graphic design, you know, the, the, the look of the letters and all that stuff, you have to be very, very specific. Um, and if you're not, you still have to pay for whatever they give you. Uh, Josh says, luckily, I think crunch is being addressed by the majority of the industry. And as for the composer, the details of the contract holds the answer. Either it had the upper hand or didn't. Simple as that. And I believe that, um, I believe if you were to read the contract, I believe the, 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 uh, the composer has the upper hand. However, uh, id is trying to add its own spin or interpretation on the contract. Um, so I, but you know what, we'll, we'll see the, this, this story is definitely not going to go any way anytime soon. Um, see, this is why I just don't read. It just makes my life a lot simpler. I prefer ignorant bliss. Believe me, believe, this, th- unfortunately, um, that was the approach I took with politics for a long, long time. And then, <laughs> Crazy shit happened, and now I actually have to freaking pay attention. I just follow you, pay attention, and do what Twitter tells me to do. Yeah, that that sounds like a great idea, especially after Elon Musk bought it. Okay, exactly. Let Let's go from one 
you know, crazy ass story. That's why lawyers exist. True. Um, let's go from one crazy ass story to another crazy ass story. Ladies and gentlemen, though, the, I mean, this game was announced back in 2019, but this thing is truly actually happening. And it's a game called I Am Jesus Christ. And you are going to be, uh, pl- this is a first person game where you will be playing the part of the Christian um, prophet, uh, son of God, whatever you want to say. Um, You'll be playing him, and you will be going from nativity to crucifixion. You will be experiencing all of of Jesus' life. To me, this seems like an attempt at... Uh, a quick shock sale. I'm, I'm sorry, but <laughs> one, you're not you're you're not going to please all the Christians. Two, this even if it even if you do if you find some way to to appease all the Christians, it better be the most spot perfect game. And also, but then again, at the same time, you have those people who will point out that the Bible is very contradictory and a lot of stuff that Jesus does. Is you know, uh, ooh, actually, roll that back. Fun fact: uh, the story of Jesus. There's a big ass gap in it for those of you. Water into wine. I'm in exactly. Sam Grizzle. Um, he he's born, and then all of a sudden he's an adult. So, are we are we getting to play? I want to see the horrors of Babylon. Who knows? Are we going to get to see his awkward? You know. Teen years, His teenage years. Yeah, what it, angsty, angsty Jesus? Are, are we, are, are we going to? And where's the source material for that? Is it going to be one of the gospels that, that's uh, been hidden away or rejected by whatever denomination of Christianity you are? I'm going to assume I'm going out on a limb here without knowing anything about the game. It's basically yeah. probably going to follow the gospels, basically. And just you're basically going to go probably straight into his, you know, life of ministry would be my assumption. So uh, you're you're gonna you're gonna do like a like high five the the uh, the um, you know, thanks for the frankincense and myrrh and gold, and then fl- uh, flash forward to his ministry. I guess I mean, say, the seeds. Like, can I, I like, is there a way to stop, like, you know, Judas from betraying you? I know. Or, like, can you, like, fight your way out of the crucifixion? You know, you're going to tell Peter to actually pick up that sword and fight oh, for no. your life? There is, um, hold on. I don't know. It's, I mean, you never know. Like, you think the about game it, is designed of- to be replayable with different choices leading to different outcomes. Oh, Christ. Oh, <laughs> pun no intended. pun intended, or maybe pun intended. I don't know. But it's funny because if you think about it, like, I mean, if you're playing, let's just say the true to the gospels, let's just assume they're true for the sake of the argument. It's not really a choose your own adventure. Yeah. It's kind of like there's like one storyline. Um, so I'd be kind of curious to see like what, like, it doesn't matter which of the four gospels you decide to choose today. They all result in crucifixion and burial. Like, so how do you have like a different ending? Uh, it would be interesting, I guess. Yeah. Um, like, like uh, this time I, I'm, I'm not going to have him as one of my apostles. <laughs> there you go. You can this choose time I'm going to make one of the fish that I magically created uh, as my second in command. Like, I, this seems, I, like I said, I think that this is going to, Unfortunately, I mean, I, this might be a phenomenal game. I mean, these these developers might truly have their heart and souls into it, but I I think there's like a 95% chance that this game will be turned into like infinite uh, memes and people trying to do the dumbest shit possible to just wreck it. But Sam Grizzle says your character never dies. He's you get to follow his path. You can perform over thirty miracles. Apparently, you have a Holy Spirit power. 
where you can perform miracles. What happens if you yeah. lose the Holy Spirit? What if you go chaotic evil? Jesus uh, Jesus goes goth. Oh, you do get to experience his crucifixion and death. <laughs> With force feedback. That's going to go over real well. Yeah, there's driving like a the little, nails through your hand. I don't know if it's like a mana bar or a health bar or what it is of like some kind of meter in the game that I'm seeing. Yeah. Um, which is funny because you want to go all like, you know, biblical. Technically, he's God, so therefore he has infinite power. So there is no need for a meter. True. Well, I mean, you can have a meter, just never, uh, you know, depletes. The planet, yeah, it never gets depleted. Like it's always full, I guess, would be a way of looking at it. Um, but it changes colors. Ooh. It starts off as a clear watery and then turns to a, a nice rosé. You get to interact with 60 characters. What And, and what pra- I, I know this, this is this is so bad, and, and I, I apologize, big guy upstairs, but um, what kind of interactions are we talking about? Oh, dear gosh. <laughs> well, it depends. Which uh, heretical sector are you part of in that he had relations with Mary Magdalene? Or maybe he was a free-loving guy who had relations with a lot of everyone. I mean, that was. I mean, there are sex that do believe that Jesus did do those type of things. That he wasn't just, yeah. So, are they going to follow the traditional Christian, or actually, which denomination are they following? Because Catholic, Catholic, Catholic ba- Baptist. Versus you know, there are different dominations. You have different interpretations of what happened. Yeah, exactly. So, I, I mean, this one, I, 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 this is just trouble. I mean, this, this just trouble. Well, like, even like any of the games that have like religion, mm-hmm. like they'll go as far as like probably the best example is Smite. Yeah. Where they take the ancient, you know, Roman pantheons but you don't really see games or movies or TV shows really touch, you know, modern religion too yeah. much um, because it just ends up creating usually not positive controversy. Yes. Um, you know, the old saying, any news is good news. Usually not when it comes to religion um, is when it concerns your work of fiction. Um, yeah. Yeah, so that'd be curious. I don't think it has worked for some shows, like so. Warrior Nun's pretty popular. I don't know, hear too many controversies over that. Or you have the whole um, Brown series, which I find kind of terrible, but that's okay. Um, Wait, the what series? What's his? I can't remember his first name. Brown with Tom Hanks. Oh, the Dan Brown stuff. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, um. Angels and demons yeah, and angel de- uh, da Vinci, da Vinci code, code and all that stuff. Yeah. No. Uh, when, when you said Brown, I immediately thought of the 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 actor who plays um, uh, the the father of the Weasleys and uh, yeah, I and can see that. Harry Potter. He is actually uh, there. There's a BBC series, BBC TV series, and he uh, it's called Father Brown, and oh. he is like a a crime solving priest. Did not know that. It's it's pretty good. I mean, it's huh. it's stupid and it's campy, but it's it's good. Um, but yeah, I mean, but it's curious because like I don't see like is there a cost to this game because there's no like way to pre-order or anything. Right. Uh, hell, it might just be vaporware. I mean, it might just be trying to drum up. Uh, you know, you know what'd be excellent is once they get enough people either rallying against it or for it, they're like, look. We understand that it was a you know a, um, a very touchy topic, and we decided to utilize what we've gained through that game to create this game. <laughs> Since we got all your eyes on us, how about this game that has nothing to do with religion, but look how pretty and polished it is. A little switcheroo. So apparently, this publisher has put out other games though, so it's not like is it other of religious game, but... games though. Uh, from what I'm seeing, I'm just quickly looking now. It's like. Party Maker and Mythbusters and Builder Simulators. Ah, so nothing as deep as this one. No. 
Um, you have to do a strength check to see if you can roll the rock away from your tomb. Okay. <laughs> if not, are you not resurrected? You're just a normal pleb like You're the rest of us? Hello? Hello? I'm still in here. Okay, anyways, moving on. Like, are you going to experience the rapture? Is revelation going to happen? Ooh. Hare Krishna, shave head and pass out brochures at the airport. <laughs> That's what you you evolve into somebody else. You come back. That would be interesting. And then burn the, the earth to the ground. Okay. So let's let's move off of I am Jesus Christ, the first person game. And let's talk about um let's talk about a weird twisted twisted thing that um uh, let's see, when does this actually come out? So maybe last week or two weeks ago, the creator of the Oculus Rift, for some really crazy reason, has decided he's got way too much free time. Mm. Probably because he's got a shit ton of money because he sold the Oculus Rift to Meta, or I guess at the time Facebook. Um and so he created a, a VR headset that will actually kill you in real life. He took inspiration from Sword Art Online. Oh, dear. That seems like a terrible idea. Seems like... Uh, okay, I have a really morbid idea. Re repeat business. I have a really morbid idea. What's that? So somebody's on death row, right? Like this is something that probably come out of like judge dread, right? Yeah. It's futuristic. You know, people are in death. Actually, those are their a game actually based around this idea where like you basically have the criminals who would fight in these games and like they actually like affected their real life. Uh, Gamer with uh, yeah. Gerard Butler or Jared, yeah. but whatever, yeah, there you go. whatever you the do. pronunciation is. Yeah. Yeah. You can take like this concept and basically turning like the gamer slash death race. And now it's like entertainment for the masses where we could put this on the, you know, death row criminals and, you know, gives them a chance to win their freedom if they do well enough. And, you know, throwing a little hunger games where you can get like a little bit of favor from like sponsors to give like, you know, your people power ups of like, you know, so they can shoot fireballs and stuff. I don't know. So yeah. I think we get like all these different, like, you know, post-apocalyptic futuristic type of genres together for our games for entertainment right i mean it sounds logical we're already on that path with this vr system might as well put it to practical use so is this how like i've realized is this how like politicians and sports people like you know you get like quotes taken out of context yeah. where it's like that's not what i actually said at all Whereas here I'm being like, death row inmates should play games to the death for entertainment of people. Yeah, he, uh, no, the thing is, oh my God. Okay, so uh, it's it's not him going, you know, it would be cool. It's he actually did this. Uh, he claims he has made a headset, headset capable of killing its user via three explosive charges that could be triggered if the player dies in virtual reality. How do you prototype this? Like, do you actually prototype it like in a mouse? Like That's everything true. else. And, and, and it, what's the fail safe? Like, you know, <laughs> if let's say there, someone hacks the code and, you know, sets off those explosives and you were, it's, it's the, it's like the terrible next step in swatting. Yeah. No. I think I'll pass. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm good. I'm, I, I really. It. Um. He says. Uh. He believes the uh, ultimate realism in VR can only come from having such extreme stakes. Well, no shit, Sherlock. But I'm going to be totally honest with you. If it, if there is a game to be played in which I might actually truly die, uh, I'm going to find another game to play. Not gonna lie. I guess, the, you know, they, it's like free climbing, right? Like yeah. once someone free climbing, you're going to die. So, you know, maybe some people will have that crazy need for, you know, the ephedrine or what they get from living on the edge and not dying, basically. So maybe that's what this is tailored for is 
the the you know, uh, the uh, what, what do you call them? Um, sports like the, the extreme junk- junkies. Yeah, extreme junkies. Yeah. No. God, Jesus, no. God. There's there's so many. Ah, uh, no, no, I don't. No, that's not me. It's not for me. Look, I'm you sure? I, look, the, the just to take it one slight step back. Dot hack. The storyline is that people would fall into a mysterious coma where their basically their spirits or their minds would be trapped in the game, but their body would be comatose. Mm. That's scary enough. But to ramp it up to the next level, go yeah. By the way, uh, built into your VR headset is three uh, explosive charges that if you die inside the game, will blow your brain open. Brain open. I just done. Yes, I'm sure there, there's people out there like, yeah, let's do it. Spawn point heaven. Well, I guess that's one way to not have uh, uh, camping. <laughs> spawn camping. Yeah, oh, man. you died in your spawn. Too bad. You, you just got to play the uh, Jesus game and you have enough prayer to move the boulder out of the way to resurrect your character. Use the Holy Spirit power. Oh, Lord. Anyways, I mean, cool, scary as hell. I, you know, um, I will you watch. Know, you should put that towards like actually building a stay oasis with an actual non lethal heptic suit. Yes. God, yes. I'm still, ladies and gentlemen, I, I, hopefully the, the vast majority of the audience understands what we keep saying the oasis. The oasis is a, it's a fictitious operating system that was, uh, that's basically a center point in an amazing novel called Ready Player One. There's mm-hmm. also a movie. I've, I still have, I own the movie, but I haven't watched it simply because I'm scared that it's going to suck. So I haven't gotten the courage to watch it. The movie's good. Like, okay. I, I, I thought it was fine. I have all the Funko Pops for it. You're weird. You buy movies and you don't watch them because, oh no. You're a little afraid that it's not going to be identical to the books. No, 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 no. I'm afraid that it won't live up to the hype that I've built up in myself. It was good. You should watch it. All right, I'll watch it. Add it to the list of things for Charlie to watch. There you go. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I do want to take a quick pause to thank all the amazing people that help Alter Confusion continue to be Alter Confusion. So uh, I'm going to tell it. I'm going to give you these beautiful, amazing friends of the show, and then I will tell you how you, my friend, can become a friend of the show as well. Are we a friend of the show just by being here? You could be even... You could have... Not only could you can you enjoy the show, but you can actually get a shout-out during the show. Uh, so the first shout-out goes to the Indie Cluster. The Indie Cluster is an organization of independent game developers that want to gain exposure by being involved in the community. They collectively journey to popular conferences as a traveling booth to help gain attention for their games. They make partnerships in local communities to bring games to the mainstream mindset. They highlight local, unusual, and rare concepts to help to challenge the paradigm of the common. They also host events to teach kids and minority groups about game development to hopefully one day enter the industry themselves. For information, go to IndieCluster.com. IndieCluster! The next shout-out we got to give is... Noodle Boy Media. Founded in 2015 by Andrew Tran, Noodle Boy Media, previously White Kid 47 Media, is your choice for professional photo shoots and panel recordings at conventions. They pride themselves in providing a high level of professionalism, top-notch experiences, and quality services. If you want more information and to view their full list of services, check out facebook.com slash Noodle Boy Media. Noodle Boy Media! The next shout-out goes to someone who I actually need to call because I need some help. Uh, And that is Hero Chiropractic. Hero Chiropractic is a unique healthcare practice set up by Ryan Moore. The company's focus to elevate a patient's experience of freedom, creative expression, and joy. They believe that everyone can be a hero and has incredible heroic potential inside themselves waiting to be unleashed. Hero Chiropractic focuses on mobile chiropractic care in the greater Atlanta area. They are committed to healing clients by creating a plan of action uniquely suited for each person. They want they make that 
plan of action as convenient and affordable as possible, and most importantly, suited to your individual needs. For more information, go to HeroChiropractic.com. Now, the next shout-out we have to give is to the amazing maestro who helped us in a jam that we didn't foresee ourselves falling into uh, when it came to non-copyright music suddenly becoming copyrighted. And that, of course, is Crosspad Creative. Need a new logo or want to work on a full branding and content strategy? Or maybe you need music or audio for your content, just like Alter Confusion. Crosspad Creative offers a whole host of solutions for individuals and small businesses. Just email Josh at crosspadcreative at gmail.com and see what he can do for you. Now the final shout-out we got to give is to probably our longest supporting patron, and that, of course, is Agile Axiom. By day, Axe leads both a development team and a system administration team working on satellites at NASA's Goddard campus. But while not in meetings and many times during, he is the Agile Evangelist Agile Axe, championing the philosophy of Agile and trying to make the world a better place for software developers, testers, system admins, and software projects the world over. Decades of experience in software development and leading Agile teams are brought to bear against evil processes inefficient work, and bad habits. For more information, go to agileaxiom.com. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I know that you are on the edge of your seat. You have to know, how do I get to be a friend of the show and get a shout-out during every single Thursday night hangout? Well, ladies and gentlemen, I am happy to tell you that Ultra Confusion survives on the love and support of fans like you. And so we have a patron page. Patreon lets you, the fans, lovers, haters, demigods, international beings, gods, demons, alien supporters, and many more to become active participants in the work we love through a monthly membership. This gives you access to exclusive content, community, and insight into our creative process. In exchange, we gain a bit more freedom to do our best work and the stability we need to build an even stronger creative career. Currently, we have two levels. We have a $1 a month or $12 a year level, and that will get you access to the early access playthroughs uh, that get posted once a month at this current time, and also patron-only posts that will help shape the future of Ultra Confusion. Now, I know you're feeling a little extra frisky, so there's a $5 level that's $5 a month or $60 a year, and not only do you get everything at the $1 level, but you also gain the ability to become a friend of the show, and you will get a weekly shout-out during every single Thursday night hangout. Either your organization or your name will be added to that thank you section every single week. So, ladies and gentlemen, become a patron today. Now, I... Yesterday? I know that th that it is already passed, but there is still time, ladies and gentlemen, if you want to help donate to the amazing thing that we do every single year. Ladies and gentlemen, Ultra Confusion is proud to say that we have successfully fundraised for Extra Life for 11 straight years. Extra Life is gamers doing what they do best, game, to help sick and injured children at their chosen Children's Miracle Network Hospital. The money we've raised through Extra Life goes directly to Children's Healthcare of Atlanta as unrestricted funds. This means that the hospital decides where and how to spend the money to ensure the dollars we raise make the biggest impact in the lives of the kids they treat. So if you have the capacity to donate, there's still time. Go to extra-life.org and search for Alter Confusion. Now, um, I definitely need to update. Uh, I need to put a new slide, but ladies and gentlemen, I know that I've been talking about this, and you may have already noticed this amazing hat that I'm wearing. Uh, but Ultra Confusion actually has some merchandise, and we are in the process of adding two more items. I just can't tell you what those two are right now. But currently, we have a, a vinyl sticker and this amazing Ultra Confusion hat, which is available if you go to alteredconfusion.tv slash merch, I believe. Zealus, can you double-check that real quick? I think it's merch. Yeah. The suspense is killing us, ladies and gentlemen. <gasps> dun, dun, dun. It is merch. Ha-ha. I am smart. I have brain cells today for this current moment in time. So, anyways, uh, like I said, ladies and gentlemen, 
If you want to be a patron, please go to patreon.com slash alterconfusion. If you want to help donate to Extra Life, go to extra-life.org, search for Alter Confusion. And of course, if you want some alter, some sweet Alter Confusion merch, just go to alterconfusion.tv slash merch. That's M-E-R-C-H. Let's move on to the next story. The next story is... Okay, here's the question. Are we ever going to truly have uh, a successful cloud gaming platform? Or are we going to have all these juggernauts jump in there going, we're going to have something for a couple of years, and then we're going to shut it down? Uh, as many of you know, Google Stadia has gone. <whistles> and now there are starting to be signs that Amazon's Luna cloud gaming might be suffering the same fate, though it's not been confirmed. Um, what, uh, is being confirmed is that Amazon is, uh, basically laying off employees across varieties, a variety of divisions, including Luna cloud gaming. According to some reports, Amazon is aiming to ax 10,000 jobs, hmm. uh, and they've already started the process. Damn. Now, um... Some people may point to the, the 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 simple fact is that the new head of Amazon, who I believe uh, Andy Jassy, uh, has not instilled the confidence of a Jeff Bezos, and um, yeah, uh, apparently, uh, one point nine trillion dollars in market cap has already evaporated since Jassy has taken over. Oh, poor Amazon. What will they ever do? I don't know. Do more Black Friday specials? <laughs> Every day is now Black Friday special. Yes. Ha-ha. And Amazon Prime prices will really increase. Secret. Anyway, so, um, you know, I... The, this, the cloud gaming stuff, it, in my mind, is on is basically on par with the VR gaming thing. It's a cool idea. And it should work, but it's still not there. Well, I think more, I think the first real step that we're already partly to, for the most part, is the hybrid. Meaning, always online games. So, for instance, like any basically FPS or MMO game, yep. you're basically playing that game online. I know you have the local client, and then you have the server they're playing on. So you already kind of have this hybrid model in a way that's been going on for years already. Um, I think what it'll really take eventually, honestly, is remember one of the big rumors when... I think it was the Xbox specifically when like the current gen Xbox was coming out was that it was basically going to be an online streaming device. I don't remember, but that was at the time there were speculations because of the patents they were filing that that would be, and there was this whole like crazy, like cloud computing nexus thing that was going on with it. Yep. And that was like the big rumor is like you would basically leverage all the other Xboxes to, use your computing power for your own xbox um did happen obviously and it's just a normal xbox but i ultimately think that's what's going to take is basically one of the consoles to successfully implement the online gaming in the way of the luna or the stadia wherever we're going to call it um i think that's where it's going to come from it i don't think it's going to be in the you know PS6 version, whenever that comes out. Uh, but I think eventually it's going to happen. And ultimately it comes down to money. There's going to come a tipping point where economically it makes more sense from a publisher and developer perspective to stream the games than to have the end users download it. And that's ultimately what it's going to come down to is where does it make more economic sense for that to be the case? Who knows when that's going to be? Because um, I think that'll also lower eventually. Because remember, the whole other benefit when they were speculating by the Xbox was it was also going to require much less computational power from the hardware itself. 
So now all of a sudden, both Sony and Microsoft would be able to save production costs on this device, which is typically actually a lost leader. Like they're not actually making money off that hardware. So that's, I think that's where it's going to come from is at what point is it going to make these big companies money is really where that tipping point is going to come. Is that 10 or 20 years? I don't know, but at some point it will happen. And that, I think it's not just that, like everything's going to be basically a virtual service of some sort. You also have to have something installed on your whole local device. Like there's really some client there, but I think you'll see more and more over time. Now, the other big hurdle though, to be fair, as I know we talk about many times in the show is us data caps. Um, and that is a pretty big hurdle that unfortunately is not going away anytime soon. So I don't know what the answer to that is other than our bloody stupid politicians doing something and get off their anti-competitive asses about it. They need to remove the, the, um, uh, the law that states that an outside company cannot um, impede upon an existing services footprint when it comes to uh telecommunication and that yeah. but that will but the telecommunication the telecommunication companies pay people too much for that to happen but to be in, in tr true honesty um i think that to if to make streaming or to create the the god of streaming uh, game streaming cloud gaming all that stuff it's going to have to take a partnership from one of the big companies, Microsoft, Sony, Nintendo, probably not Nintendo. Uh, so Microsoft or Sony or some magical th or Amazon or Google or, or something to do a partnership with uh, an ISP, which, of course, that would create a hell of a monopoly. Now, wouldn't it? Because not only can you have your whatever your amazing download and upload speeds, but also if you're with this service, you, uh, the, your cloud gaming does not affect your data cap. Well, let's be real though. If an ISP can own a streaming service and a media company. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Hello I, Comcast. Yeah. So if that's already a reality, which I don't think it should be allowed, but it already is a reality to your point. That is, unfortunately, for the consumer, um, probably the next logical step in that regard. Yeah. Um, I do think, you know, the fact that you've had both Amazon and I'm assuming Amazon stepping back from it based on this article and the stadia failing. But it's still going to be a ways off. Like, it's not something that's like right around the corner. Well, I mean, the, the thing is, in, in order for. To, to the the reason why VR or any I'm I'm gonna I'm not okay I'm gonna basically just categorize cloud gaming as a third party peripheral okay just so that I can make it go faster. The reason why these third party peripherals do not truly catch on and become integral parts of the gaming that we see today is that there isn't that one you know must have title or there isn't that one company that truly throws their entire weight behind that third party peripheral um you know that's truly that's that that's what will stop vr or from becoming mainstream but i can have meetings i've seen so many of those you know virtual meeting uh uh sound uh sessions uh going on yeah that that's just Meta trying to make money. Nobody it's, actually wants nope. that. First of all, the infrastructure to actually make that work would be insane. Uh, second of all, uh, on, on a large scale, I mean, yeah, if, if you and your buddy want to have a virtual meeting in, in Meta and you both have a VR headset and, and have, you know, uh, comparable um, hardware that can truly support it, then yeah, by all means, you know, have your meetings that way. But that's not mainstream. That That's it. Yeah, like, like the company I work for, we're hundred percent remote yeah. and we're like 3000 employees. So that would also then require the company to send all of us this not cheap nope. hardware 
And all of a sudden, you're going to have to be telling, like, think about, like you and I, like, we're tech savvy, probably yep. the people watching this. Now, all of a sudden, you're going to be telling, like, you know, basically the equivalent of our moms, oh, here's your VR kit. Now you have to hook this up to your, you know, laptop or PC or whatever. Like, no. <laughs> yeah, no, no, yeah. The and, pro- oh, the motion sickness issue is still real. Yes, yes. Um, yeah. Although I'm not going to lie, I want the PS5 VR2. I think there's quite a few people out there that would would be uh, would agree with you, Zelis. If I get the pre-register, I'm actually buying it. <gasps> yes. Then you'll have but to tell me about it. I'll say though, that's another not instrument thing. So right now, you get a console or a PC, right? Mm-hmm. And I think there is a there like there's a money sink bias, meaning for the PC, you know you have to buy a keyboard and mouse and you have to have a monitor, right? Right. And you know for your console, you have to have a you know TV or monitor and then your gamepad, right? Yep. But now all of a sudden you're talking. I mean, I benefit, I have the disposable income where I could throw six hundred dollars down on a VR if if I really wanted to right Mm -hmm. that's more than the original price of the any of the consoles yep so there is a absolutely a cost disincentive for vr and the other big disincentive is you know you buy your keyboard and mouse or monitor they could last for literally decades whereas the psv version one is not compatible with the game. Like the game library for PSV1 is not compatible with the PlayStation 5 VR2. And that's the whole issue with the difference between like the Meta, the Oculus, and the PlayStation 5 and all these different the systems. HTC Vive. The Vive. You have these different platforms. And we talked about this years ago. You're the one who always said, I mean, you've been, you've been saying this one for many years where the lack of a common SDK is also a killer. And I'll fully admit, me buying a VR2 when it, I can get my hands on one, I'm on the fringe on that. Like, it is not a, it's not going to be the common gamer who has that. And you are right. Until you have that common SDK, is absolutely an issue. Um, yeah. So uh, it's, yeah. The, the other thing is, especially when it comes to gaming console, uh, it's it's going to require more than just a game to truly jump in there. I mean, you would have to have like a, a library to kind of justify buying something that costs more than the system that you're actually playing the game on. Um, I I always jokingly and and I, I jokingly say this, but at the same time, I believe that this would be a, a cer- this specific game would be a situation that if it if uh, the developer which I don't think they, they would ever do this, but if the developer were to make it VR only, you would see VR headsets fly off the shelves, and that, of course, is Half-Life 3. That's, I'm, I'm, I'm serious. I, like, yeah, I jokingly say that, but at the same time, seriously, if Half-Life 3 was VR only, holy shit, the amount of HTC vibes that would be, like, magically, you know, flying off the shelves to so that people could play this game. Skyrim six. Ooh, see, I would be slightly scared of playing Skyrim in VR. That that I think I would get motion sickness. That you need the exploding helmet for. Oh, exactly. you've just been engulfed oh. in by a dragon. Your oh head. shit! You fell off your dragon. <laughs> You're you, you land on your head. Kaboom. Okay, well, you you had a good run there, my friend. Good run. No, I. Yeah. I mean, it would be. Yeah, it's, it, <laughs> It, it, you know. I was, I think I was always more bullish on VR than you, but now I'm also I think much more of a skeptic because it is, it's a extra peripheral which is not necessary for gaming as we know it. Mm-hmm. And if, if anything, like the Nintendo Switch and the Steam Deck have further deviated from the idea of VR. Yep, they've like made it more mobile in that regard. Yep. So it is interesting where it's like, you know, five years ago, 
the whole idea was like VR is going to take off, and now it's kind of like maybe it's always just going to be a niche thing. Yeah. Well, I mean, like you know, you know, only time will tell. But to be honest with you, you could you could say that phrase to anything. Only time will tell. Well, no shit, Sherlock. It's either going to fail or it's going to succeed. When is it going to fail? Maybe tomorrow. Is when is it going to succeed? Ten years? I don't know. Okay. Let's Does Xbox even have a VR kit? No. Okay. I think they I think they put more more of their focus on on having the cross platform from uh, mm-hmm. Xbox to PC. Yeah. Uh, or sorry, Windows machines. Don't yeah. want anyone to get confused here. Um, okay, so the next uh, bit of news that came in, which is very interesting, but at the same time, I don't know. I like, I want this to be good, ladies and gentlemen. A very popular arcade game from back in the day, Streets of Rage, is oh getting a film adaptation with help from the creator of John Wick and Liongate. Lionsgate. Sorry. Blech. Um, you know, was it a movie or TV show? Did it say movie? It's a good movie. Uh, but, so did, but yeah. from my understanding that the, the, this, the creator of John wick, he's, he's making an approach to, for it to have more than one movie. Already out of the bat. Yeah. See, I, I think I like, it seems to me like this is something that'd be a perfect studio for like a six to eight episode TV series per season type of thing where it can have like, you know, one or two badass action sequences per an episode, kind of like into the badlands where you're like, I don't know yeah. if you're into the badlands, but like you actually have like, it was actually a pretty good story to be honest. Um, to begin with, with yes. Nominal acting. The uh the Baron. The family, the Baron. Oh, oh he's yeah. he's one of my favorite characters of any show. Um because of his acting. But you would then have, you know, the one or two crazy awesome action sequences per a episode, but then you'd actually have a really good story and acting to go with that. Um and it's different because now you can be very I'm going to be honest. I have no idea what's out in the theaters anymore. Zero. I know it's coming out on streaming devices. Like, that's where I'm in it. But that's where the demographic is going. Yeah. Where it's, you know, it's that's where people's visions are going is towards, you know, the Hulus and the Netflixes, et cetera, et cetera. And it's no longer, you know, going on a Saturday night and spending $60 at a movie theater for a couple of tickets and popcorn and a soda. I could do that in my living room for without having to deal with the quad next to me on a cell phone the whole time. Um, so it's kind of like, it's interesting. So, I mean, I'm always up for another John Wick type of show. Yeah. Uh, I guess the question is, you also have to have a badass female in it because that blaze is one of the main characters in the show. And furthermore, like, because it's really the three characters. It's Blaze, the black dude. And I think there's two brothers, if I remember right. I'm trying. I'm, I'm trying to pull up the. Uh... But I, th- I think those are like the four main people you could choose from. Um, were those four characters? So is it like are you gonna have like all four in this John Wickish type of atmosphere? Um, it's really Adam, Axel, or Blaze, saving yeah, the city. from... From being overtaken by the criminal syndicate led by Mr. X. So are you gonna have like all three in it at all times? Um I mean, it, you know, because John Wick is obviously kind of Reeves John Wick. You've had the side characters. Yep. But like in the grand scheme of things, it's really John Wick who made it happen. Yeah. Um so that's why I'd be kind of curious to see who how takes center goes. stage. What's that? Who who yeah. takes center stage and who who basically gets some spotlight on occasion? Yeah, I mean, I think you probably have to have at least Blaze and a guy, like as kind of your main protagonist. Um, 
So the that question should be is, now, now for those out there who, you know, we're, we're, we're explaining this to you. For those of you who were born after, basically, because these games all came out, like, early 90s. So if you're, like, the 2000 babies, um, you may have heard it may have heard of it when it came out on the 3DS back in 2013. I didn't know that, but Streets of Rage apparently came out on the 3DS, which oh my god, they, just thinking about that gives me a headache because to hold a 3DS exactly like that and then have to button mash so that you could do um a total of 40 moves such as headbutts, back slams and reverse kicks. It is a lot of button mashing. Yes it is. But that's, I mean, that's the, that's what the good old fighters of back in the day did. The good old mash em ups, beat em ups, yeah. side scrollers, whatever you want to call them. Yeah, yeah, they're side scrollers. I mean, they, you know, you 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 uh, traverse across the from one side of the screen to the other. Uh, the original uh, Streets of Rage um, was eight levels uh, long. And of course, you know, you got to, oh boy, here we go again. I apologize if anyone's looking at the chat. We, we've we been streaming for just long enough for the, the bots to find us. Oh. So we just lost. So if you're watching the video and you don't actually see the chat, the you're not on Twitch or on like Facebook or, or something else, the chat window just disappeared uh, because I had to, oh, there we go. Oh, that's right. I forgot. Facebook likes to resubmit their posts. But Twitch does not. Um, it is for some reason you hit a certain amount of time on uh, while you're streaming on uh, YouTube, and the porn site bots come attack. <laughs> Hooray! Fascinating. Yes, I did not know that. I I learned I learned about it or started really getting to experience the the joys of that. Uh, during the extra life stream. They really wanted to give you an extra life. They wanted to give me an extra something. Okay. So, uh, you know, so we'll see. I mean, you know, it's been announced. There's going to be a Streets of Rage movie. God only knows when it's actually going to come out. Um, but could be cool or could be absolutely terrible. But in, in I mean, my I, mind, I, uh, you know, um, uh, getting video games into, you know, video game stories onto a different uh, uh, media. I'm okay with that. I mean, as long as this man was able, I don't know how, but he was able to to get every single effing movie he wanted to uh, to be based on a video game over to the movies, you bowl, but we don't need any more you bowl. Nope. I, I mean, if it's like John Wick or it's just like beat you up in the face action, then cool. Yeah, I, I think I think I can. I mean, that's what the beat 'em ups were. It was like there wasn't a whole other story. It was just button mashing. All right, the next uh, the next bit of news is the fact that if uh, you if either you you live in China or you have a friend who lives in China, uh, unfortunately, I believe I don't know if it it's immediate. Oh no, it will be. Um, uh, starting January 23rd of 2023, uh, Blizzard, all of Blizzard's games will no longer be accessible in China. Uh, oh, no. Blizzard has not been able to uh, reach an agreement with their uh, their licensing distributor, uh, NetEase. Uh, so, yeah, there will not be Blizzard game unless something changes, which could happen but at this time there uh china will be losing um all of their blizzard library which is yet another reason why uh on uh having all your games in the cloud can suck because your distributor could decide to have uh you know a pissing match with the, the owner of the content, and then that content is no longer available, even though you paid for it or whatever. Sup? Yeah. It's funny because I remember, like, in the past, like, Blizzard and, like, World of Warcraft would, like, 
change the skeletons to like other sprites because of things that like the Chinese found offensive. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, it's a, I mean, that's a huge because, like, no, let's be honest, no company wants to lose the Chinese market because that's so bloody large as far as money goes. Uh, so that's where it is kind of interesting that they were not able to reach this agreement because that has to affect their bottom line in some way. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh- we have a chatter who wanted to know if you were Walter White. And I said, no, we can't afford him. So this is just our version, not the drug. Uh, the drug. No, I'm, the, I'm the fake version. I'm the, I'm the rental Walter White. I, ironically, Zelius does have a bachelor's of science in chemistry and biology, but he doesn't use it that way. But <laughs> I, also as have, I, know. <laughs> I also have hair. For now. Well, okay. Touche. Ha <laughs> ha. No, but you know, I mean, this is. Uh, you know, uh, this is uh, what's happening with Blizzard and and NetEase. This unfortunately happens a lot in a lot of different industries. I mean, shit. Um, uh, I can't, what the hell are they called now? Bally Sports, I believe, is what they're called. It used to be Fox Sports South and all the regional Fox Sports. Uh, you you can't watch any of their programs on like basically any streaming service. You can't do it on YouTube TV. You can't do it on Hulu. Uh, I don't know if you could do it on AT&T U-verse or maybe I don't know if you could do it on satellite either. I think Comcast might be the only ones who could do it or maybe Comcast doesn't have it and it's only on satellite. It's a crazy ass bullshit. What what's what's the distributor and and the uh you know the content providers start button heads. Oh buddy. It it could be nasty and it it's not it might very well not be a quick fix. I mean, hell, I've been, I I I live in Atlanta, Georgia. I am a huge Atlanta Hawks fan. I have not been able to watch an Atlanta Hawks uh basketball game at my house in 4 years because I don't get the channel. Now, I have ESPN Plus and if I was not in Atlanta, I would be able to watch the game, but because I am in Atlanta, is the regional bullcrap that locks it into the regional affiliate. I do have some good news for Blizzard players, though. What's that? Uh, Diablo Immortal yes. will still be able to be played by Chinese players. Because it would be through uh, mobile networks, right? Instead of through the, the, the PC? Uh it's that would just be a different it, distribu- distribution. It was just method. it was just a separate like I guess whatever they had with Diablo Immortal was a separate agreement than the PC based games. It would it Is wouldn't it? surprise me because you're you're basically filtering through a different um uh network connection. Who knows? So if you have you know it, it uh so you're saying is we need World of Warcraft on our cell phones. I'm surprised that hasn't happened, to be honest with you. After the Activision Blizzard merger, I'm surprised that has not happened. Sam said, if you have a smartphone or a PC, you have every sport on the planet for free. Come on now. Actually, a mm-hmm. lot of the um a lot of the stream providers require you to lock in your location. And if you try to dick around with it a lot, it will lock you out of your account. Which I found out the hard way with YouTube TV when I had YouTube TV. Because I used to do the I I used to do VPN to try to be like I'm in uh, Des Moines, so I could watch the Hawks game. They're like, no, you're not. Your account is is supposed to be with it with the Atlanta, so you're locked into Atlanta. I don't care where you are. <laughs> They're getting smarter. Damn it! You know it's the same thing as the uh, uh, sharing the Netflix. Up oh, and we lost Delius. And Zelius is back. Hooray! It's like my once a week leaving. Yes, Zelius has to dramatically leave in the middle of the show and then come back and say, Hello! Look at me. I'm back to keep on. Keep on keeping on. In my free time on Ultra Confusion. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, uh, hopefully for those gamers who are desperate for their Blizzard itch, maybe they find a quick agreement. Otherwise... Uh, sorry. 
Okay, the final the final story that I want to talk about because we're right, we're almost out of time, but there is a nasty rumor that is circulating right now around Dungeons and Dragons, the upcoming Dungeons and Dragons called One D and D. There is a rumor that's saying that they are basically going to um, stop the ability to for individuals to legally publish homebrew content for this new rule set, mm. which in my mind is the stupidest effing thing you could do. But, mm-hmm. uh, you know, it would not surprise me for someone thinking that with, from Wizards of the Coast, they got, this is probably a brilliant idea because uh, Wizards of the Coast, which I, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe they're owned by Hasbro and Hasbro has already been in the news as of late saying that they're squeezing the shit out of Magic the Gathering to try to get to ink every single little penny. Not surprising. It, it's kind of a situation like, you know, Magic and D&D in those games, like they were born, you know, maybe a little idealistic here, but they were really born out of love of the game yeah. and, you know, also being close to that source material as far as what do the gamers want. Um, and when you start, you know, being purchased by larger companies like that, it all comes down to the almighty dollar. And where is the last cent of the monies to make our shareholders that one extra dollar for, you know, the end of year or whatever. So it would not surprise me at all. And unfortunately, it'll probably be the type of situation that you see that it's not entirely uncommon where it may be short term, there's some extra gains, but long term, no. And I don't know why short term there would be extra gains, to be honest. Like, it's not like, yeah, I don't, I just don't see the benefit, honestly, of doing that. Like, because one of the things that makes D so popular is the ability to homebrew and share those homebrews and do that shit. Uh, I mean, think about it, like, if you look at like D&D, look for group games, they're typically not played by a classical rule set. They're all some kind of homebrew. Now they're based in the D&D rule sets. So yeah. You still have to purchase all the D&D stuff in the first place, but then they're doing their homebrew on top of that. So it's not right. like you're filtering it for free or anything. Right. You still have to be invested into that ecosystem, but it's like, and I think that's where the people on top miss the whole point where people are so invested, particularly in something like Dungeons and Dragons, where it really is truly a labor of love, where people spend tons of hours on these homebrew sets. Got to buy a 20-sided yeah. die. Didn't, that's what Sam Grizzle said. Go to go to any gamer convention, and you'll, you'll get a huge ass cup, and just scoop it into the bucket o dice, and you will have probably a shit ton of twenties in there. No, my guess is part of what this is born out of is they have this license for third edition, mm-hmm. which is in part what Pathfinder was born from. Yep, was basically that. So it's probably the fear of that. But I would argue that all of the extra popularity of Dungeons and Dragons, because of the GPL, their open gaming platform license, outstrips the loss of gamers from Pathfinder. Because most likely people who play Pathfinder also play Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah. There's such a strong overlap between the two where it's not like this magically mutually exclusive group between the two. Um, so it is interesting because fifth edition uses the open rule set. Um, so I'd be kind of curious to see where this goes. An uh, immense black market for D and D homebrew. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Now, where I'm surprised that you haven't tried tapping more is the online market, meaning. Because I know there's like online gaming sets yep. that you can use, like higher grounds and stuff that you can use mm-hmm. to play D and D online. I, I know that already exists. But I'm surprised that like there has not been a concerted effort 
from Wizards of the Coast slash Hasbro yep. to really come full circle with the online Dungeons and Dragons platform. Mm. Um, because anything I've seen from the online element is because you have like that dungeon master and players who are willing to kind of go through some hoops to make it happen. Right. Um, so I'm, that's where I'm actually surprised is they have not fully embraced kind of online, like almost like an all in one, like, you know, personally, like download the Dungeons and Dragons on your iPhone, play, look for a group, and within 10 minutes, you'll have a group to play with. Like something like that. I'm surprised I don't hear anything about that. Well, for me, you know, the, um, I always saw, you know, um, Dungeons and Dragons, you know, you, you, you buy the books, uh, and then you may buy like, you know, one of the campaign guides or whatever to kind of start off, get your feet wet. And if you're really into it, that's when you started, you know, maybe, you know, mucking around in, in the homebrews because maybe there's a homebrew out there for, with your favorite, uh, I don't know, nostalgic TV show or something, um, you know, and that just allows you to get even further entrenched. But, you know, I, I, I hope, I mean, it, once again, this is just a rumor. It's not been confirmed, though some people have said, yeah, there's, there's, you know, there's sources that are saying, yeah, it's going to happen. <clears throat> um, but I, I, I understand. Uh, companies want to make as much money, 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 money as possible. But, um, you know, th this is Dungeons and Dragons is kind of, you know, it started in, in, you know, your parents' basement where you try to be cool and you're wizards and dwarves and elves and giants and gnomes and all that stuff. And it's really the fan base that drives it. I understand that, that you got to make your money, but I don't know, to kind of like, cut the fans off at the knees going, yeah, your content illegal now. Yeah. Cause that's where D and D is so unique where it is like, let's just pick another game, like ticket to ride. Like anybody can pick up ticket to ride mm -hmm. and any group of four people can just kind of start playing it. Yep. But Dungeons and Dragons is something where you really have to have that person as the dungeon master who's really invested in really creating a story in a game, even if you have like, you know, the guidebook and how to do the story. Right, the campaign guide. Have that, what's that? The campaign guide. Hey, thank you, campaign guide. Yep. You still have to have that dungeon master who's going to invest what needs to be invested to make it a gaming experience for the rest of the party. Right. So that's what I said, like... Yeah, it's it's very different from the typical board game in that regard. Um, yeah, so I I think most Dungeons and Dragons people would think it's a terrible would be it would yeah you you say exactly right it'd be cutting their own knees off to do it, and it's like I don't even see or see where the shortcome you know because most of the Wow, this is a terrible decision. It's because there's like short term profit involved. Right. Because you cut your staff or, you know, whatever it is. But in this case, I don't see even what the short term benefit is um, of doing this. So, yeah. 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 I, I just, there's, you know, whatever. Mm. It's stupid. In my opinion, absolutely stupid if, if, it, if it's true. So, yeah. anyways, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we have unfortunately reached the end of our show. Um, we will be off next week because it is the Turkey Day. Um, yes, it is the. Turkey what if day. we just live casted eating turkey? Dude, I I would be was a trip to Finn. I would be like half conscious, with like maybe like half a uh, a turkey leg in the side. Of, no, it's not. It would not be pretty. Ooh, what if you live cast you or steamy? What is what do you do with the don't you do your oh I, I smoke I smoke a, a turkey every single year. Um there you go. It is uh, this year will be an 18 pound bird, so it's a nine hour smoke. Nice. Yep. All right. So ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to thank everyone for tuning in to the Ultra Confusion. There's a night hand for myself, Charlie, and Zealus. It's been a pleasure giving everything to come our heads, our mouths, and of course, 
Our hearts will be back in two weeks for another amazing Altered Confusion Thursday night hangout. Remember, kids, keep on eating turkey in the free world. Gobble, gobble. <laughs>